Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is 9.51 p.m. California time, Monday, May 12, 2025. Uh, quite quite uh, wet out here in Northern California right now. Got a lot of rain coming in here, at least where I'm at. Been raining here for the last couple hours, and I'm not going to complain about it. All right, latest earthquake activity shows a 3.5 earthquake across the area of Illinois. Man, got a lot of earthquake activity here recently across the, uh, well, east of the Rockies. A lot of movement up here across the northeast, stretching down through the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Got to watch this pretty closely because it's on the move. So here's a 3.5 Illinois area. Looks like Lerna, about 1.8 miles deep. Just coming in here within the last, uh, looks like in the last couple minutes here see what we got it has been reviewed by a seismologist a few folks uh, reporting that earthquake right now i guarantee you though this 3.5 they felt it was a very shallow earthquake 2.8 kilometers there as listed uh that's going to be 1.8 miles deep it is in the uh, zone out here well just outside the new madrid seismic zone uh that you know somewhat seismically active but, uh, you know, in general, if you put all this activity we've seen out here recently, uh, and then technically in the last seven days, there's a trail of activity leading across various seismographs or seismic zones here, including the New Madrid Seismic Zone. That's why I'm saying we've got to watch this area uh, maybe for some larger movement here. The last series of large earthquakes was back in 1811, 1812. So that's a lot of time that has passed. And this whole area has been uh, technically a lot more active than normal uh, you know keep hearing about earthquakes in ohio uh, the bigger one here last or last uh, yeah last week 4.1 uh, just a lot of movement happening here with the north american plate right now in the last 30 days around illinois here nothing so this is some newer activity i don't know if there's any uh is there any gas or oil fields out here let's see what we got right underneath this person's house little farmhouse out there i'm sure they felt it quite nicely maybe they're watching uh, this video right now who knows if you if you felt this earthquake let me know in the comments i'm kind of curious to see what this one felt like obviously a little bit smaller than the 4.1 that struck down here uh to the south of this area recently but it's been a trend out here of elevated earthquake activity this is the last 30 days it shows a little bit more prominent movement out here across the east coast down through the uh, uh, the mountain range here blue ridge mountains smoky mountains uh, a lot of older fault systems out here getting hit starting to activate out here it looks like and of course the new madrid seismic zone about 22 earthquakes here in the last 30 days of various magnitudes and if we were to go back the last few months obviously it's the number is quite higher than that continue to watch this i wouldn't uh wouldn't doubt it i think with all this extra movement happening around the area uh, the likelihood of seeing something maybe larger on the new madrid seismic zone there is increasing as far as the percentage and possibility goes all right uh speaking of the new madrid seismic zone two earthquakes here this morning 2.1 and 2.4 uh, let's check out the west coast out here couple smaller earthquakes around Mount Rainier. Nothing going on here across the Pacific Northwest for now. Same for Northern California. Uh, I do want to double check the trimmer map this evening. See what we got for Cascadia trimmer, which is still elevated. Look at that. 436, 436 epicenters of trimmer. Yeah, that's a lot, actually, if you think about it here. So that raises up the total tally here in the last week of uh let's see what we got uh man 2223 there's the uh you can see a good portion of the cascadia subduction zone there with this trimmer outlining the region underneath this is not earthquake activity at the surface and it's not even earthquake activity earthquake activity is a sudden release of built-up strain this is more or less a slow slip type of earthquake slow slip event is what they call it or trimmer trimmer and it's when uh two plates here well uh, they give off a little vibrational frequency, low frequency vibration there as the Juan de Fuca plate is continuously uh, continuing to subduct here underneath the North American plate. And it's been active here across, well, mainly the southern end. We started to fill in across the central portion here and northern area recently. Uh, not so much up north here across the Vancouver Island range. I don't even know if we've had anything in the last month up there. Let me see. Yeah, not a whole lot. 
It's just recently kicked up here. It looks like around the fifth uh, of this month to where we're at right now. You know, and it's uh, num the numbers there are um, they're getting up there. So watch that here. It means the North American plate's on the move. The subduction zone is gaining further steam and uh, pressurization out here across that locked area, which doesn't sit downstream but upstream here offshore. Uh, yeah, the Cascadia, a major hazard there for the Pacific Northwest. San Francisco area, a couple smaller earthquakes here around the Hayward Fault. Looks like, uh, yeah, just off the Hayward Fault here, northern end. Nothing big. A couple ones, uh, including a two-pointer. Still watching San Francisco. It's been awfully quiet here, but when the earthquake does tick, uh, kick up, the Hayward Fault uh, seems to be the one that's uh, acting up a little bit. And that's a, that's a fault system that's well overdue and is much feared across the Bay Area because it runs through a highly populated region of the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. A little bit of movement here across the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Some twos and ones. Southern California here. Uh, nothing really above 2.5. What do we got here near San Lucas? I guess that's going to be one of the earthquakes there in the creeping section. But uh, mostly smaller microquake activity out there in Southern California for now. Uh, we missed Yellowstone, Yellowstone, so let's see what we got here across the Yellowstone overview. Uh, right here. Thunderstorms earlier. Those were a, a bunch of storms that blew through there. I was watching that on the uh, radar imagery. That's that darker blue line there that you're seeing across the uh, region. Could be wind as well. Earthquake activity, we we definitely do see one right here. That showed up quite nicely across a number of seismograph stations over here. It looks like the ep epicenter is probably around the Maple Creek area. USGS not reporting on that earthquake, and more than likely they won't unless it's above 2.5. Um, so maybe they'll get to that smaller quake tomorrow morning after the uh, meetings and whatnot. Uh, let's see here across the world view. Man, a lot of activity up here across Japan recently. That uh, is something to watch pretty closely there. It's on the move. Um, a lot of movement north here and a lot of movement south around Taiwan. Leaving the Nankai Trough Zone here, subduction zone, south coast of Japan, wide open for... I mean, it's it's building up steam, and it has been for quite a while. It's an area of major interest because it can produce large mega quakes, and uh, it actually got a mega quake warning put out on it here last year from the Japanese government because of all the activity around it and the amount of time that has passed since a large earthquake has struck on that subduction zone. Quite active here across the uh, Java Trench region. As you can see, uh, up around Myanmar, southward through the Java Trench, Indonesia area. Quite a bit of activity here. Uh, nothing big for now, but it's quite active out here. Of course, that is the crunch zone and a major area that's uh, always seen earthquake activity. If you see this globe absent of this earthquake activity, then it means the globe's not working. <laughs> There's always earthquake activity happening every given day out here. Uh, New Zealand 3.3 underneath North Island, it looks like, somewhat deep. The Aleutian Trench up here across Alaska. Got a little bit of movement stirring up out here with a 4.2. Looks like, uh, I don't know if there was actually two 4.2s, or maybe that's just a, uh, a double there from the USGS and the EMSC if they don't agree with each other. But some earthquake activity stretching up here across Alaska today. Um little swarming going on here near this area some threes nothing big happening out there for now but we are on the move the plates are on the move out here for sure uh, south america area this region down here look if you look really closely here i'm surprised it took that long to happen um got a decent swarm of earthquake activity north of the region that produced that seven pointers pull up this map right here so there's 5.1 but there's also a lot of earthquake activity happening uh, in the smaller range. If we go back the last um, 30 days, we'll see the significant earthquakes that struck down here. 7.4 back on the second, and then an aftershock some hours later for a 6.4. The general plate stress out here uh, can go northward. When you th think about the fracture boundary and the momentum of the strain and pressure, here's South America. Uh, earthquake activity it happens down here across the Scotia Plate and off the tip of South America normally applies strain northward with these general arrows pointing to the north and up here occasionally to the northwest 
Now, we're getting a pretty good swarm of activity just due north here along the southern end of the Prudchili Trench. That is highly noticeable um, on the Earthquake 3D globe there. It uh, looks like some fairly shallow earthquake activity as well in that region. Got to watch that because the Prudchili Trench has been lighting up a lot with earthquake activity following that uh, seven-pointer there earlier this month. So it might be looking at maybe some larger activity up here along the line. Uh, the Puerto Rico area. Yeah, so that's Prudchili Trench, Puerto Rico Trench up here. Uh, sometimes I get the, the mix up the two, but got uh, a little bit of activity stirring up here as well. Right around the Puerto Rico Trench, some three stirring up. It's been quite active up here as well in the last week. About 61 earthquakes of a uh, bunch of threes and twos and whatnot. Maybe occasional four over here across the Dominican Republic area. Seismically active for sure. It gets kind of squeezed in here between the South American plate that's moving up to the north and the North American plate here that's kind of moving off to the west area. It's just squeezing and warping this area, which uh, can happen uh, quite often here. Iceland, uh, a little bit of activity stirring up here. 4.7 in the last hour or so. Looks like that got, they got a little swarm going on north of Iceland. That should should uh, amplify the uh, potential volcano activity out there across those rift boundaries. That's about the only movement happening out here across this area of the globe. Uh, the Mediterranean region, 3.7 coming in right now. We're just getting all these earthquakes bouncing back and forth all over the place here in the last hour or so and again it's a plates on the move here folks they're always on the move but sometimes they can be quite elevated and that's when things can really start kicking up as far as larger movement goes all right uh let's see what else we got so there's that 3.4 illinois let's see let's check out space weather activity see if anything's going on here i, I really think we're entering into a little quiet period i know we have some some uh you know, filaments hanging out and occasional plasma eruptions, but it's pretty quiet in terms of solar flare activity. Uh, the sunspots right now, uh, not a whole lot as far as the Earth-facing side. There's a region back here across the eastern limb that may be active. It looks fairly large in coverage, but that complexity right there does not look all that impressive. And, in fact, we're flaring right now with a B flare, B7.3, that's, wow, oh, that's very minimal. Something that you see normally on solar minimum. 1% uh, or less, M flare at 15% chance, that's probably accurate. We'll be lucky if we see any C flare activity from these sunspots, but we'll watch this uh, active area across the eastern limb in the coming days. Uh, again, it doesn't look all that impressive. No major roars there in the forecast for now. Storm Prediction Center, well, yeah, we had some thunderstorms here just outside of Chico area. I picked up over half an inch here in, in a downpour that happened here at my house. Literally went right over my house here earlier today. A little bit of hail, and that was nice. Love it. But probably not the best thing for the crops out here. I know the farmers don't like it, but, uh, you know, uh, it's refreshing when a nice uh, rain comes in. Not a whole lot of severe weather in the forecast for now, though. It looks like day three, day four, maybe, as we head towards the um, end of this week. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday into Thursday. Northern Plains up there getting some severe weather risk. We'll check that out as we get a little bit closer to that time period. Uh, but for now, folks, I hope everyone stays safe out there. Have an earthquake planned, regardless of where you live out here. You know, we, we can... Uh, you know, there's so much large earthquake activity that has historically happened out here across the east coast that happened well before the established um you know population out here the the people boom so to speak and um it can happen again you know in some of these places three four hundred years since a large earthquake and uh, it's it's gonna happen again they may even find some new faults that really haven't been discovered yet underneath this area um you know this region of uh, Illinois here, not all that common for earthquake activity, but it's starting to fill in more on a broader scope around the uh, area. And that's why I say to watch the new Madrid seismic zone here closely. 
We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow for the uh, Tuesday morning update. Enjoy your Monday evening. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there.